Our objectives in this video are really simple. It's to understand what is an IPv6 address and how it's represented on the network. Now, before we begin, Vince Lombardi, the coach of the Green Bay Packers, he's now passed away, but he used to every season before football would start, he would get his team together in the spring practices and say, gentlemen, this is a football. Now, these guys knew what a football was. It wasn't like, oh, gee, that's a football. But he focused on the basics. And before we to get too wrapped up into, you know, what exactly is an IPv6 address and how's it broken up, we want to make sure we understand why we even need an IP or IPv6 address in the first place. So let's use an analogy that we're all familiar with. Let's use a house. Imagine the house or the building that you're in right now. That house has a couple of components to its address. It's got an address so it can get mail and so forth. And a couple of pieces are the street that it's on. And one thing you'll notice about the street that your building's on, or your house is on, is that the street name is common to all the other houses on that street. So I live on a street called King's Wharf Lane in Las Vegas, Nevada. And everybody on my street has that part of their address in common. They all are on King's Wharf Lane. If they're on some other street, they wouldn't be my neighbors on that same street. So that's the first component of a house address is that there's a street name involved. Another component is that there's an individual house number for each house. So my house number is different than my neighbors. My neighbors is different than his neighbors down the road and so forth. And so the two components I want to focus on for addressing in a residential area would be a street name which is common to all the people on that street, and a house number, which is unique to each house. Now, why do we bring that up? Well, check this out. We can use that same exact analogy as we compare addressing for houses to networks. There are two major components of an IP or IPv6 address. We have a network portion, and that network portion is like a common street name. So everybody on your network is going to have those same common bits, if you will, as part of their address. If they live on network 10, they're going to be on network 10 with you. And that's going to be common. We also are going to have a unique host identifier, which is like a house number that each computer is going to get. So each computer is going to have an IP address. Part of that IP address is going to represent the common street that that device is living on, and the other part of that IP address is going to represent the actual host ID, the unique house number, if you will, for each individual host. So now we understand why are the basic components of IP addressing, let me introduce you to IPv6. Now check this out, and I, <laughs> this is fun, an IPv6 address is really simple. It's a bunch of ones and zeros. In fact, it's a lot of them. It's 128 bits. Now, it's not very realistic for us to type all those into a computer or to a device because we'd have typos and mistakes, but that's really behind the scenes what it is. It's 128 bits long. And part of that 128 bits on the left-hand side, some portion of that is representing the network, which is like a street name. And every device on that common network segment is going to have those common bits. On the right-hand side, we have our host IDs, which is like a house number that individually identifies a single device on that common street. And the magic really isn't magic. The way we know which portion of this long 128-bit stream, how much of that is the network and how much is the host ID, is a dividing line called the mask. The mask is really simple. If we have a mask of 64, all that means is that the first 64 bits represent the network address. That's it. And that would mean that there's 64 bits left over for the host ID. And most of the time, for most customers, we're going to be splitting the network and the host ID 50-50 right down the middle. So that's how we know that the left half is the network because of slash 64 and the right half, half is left over for host ID. Now, working with the 128-bit number really is kind of daunting. So we're going to break it down, and we have broken it down into smaller chunks. Like somebody once said, well, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is, you know, one one bite at a time, one piece at a time. You break a big thing into smaller chunks, and that's all we're doing here. Check this out. 
we take a 128-bit number, this IP address, which we know includes the network on the left and the host ID on the right, and we're going to break it into 16-bit groups. Now, it's going to break it into eight groups of 16 bits each. And to just have visual clarity, we're going to add a colon between every 16 bits. So really, it's just eight chunks, eight groups of bits, and there's 16 in each group. Okay, so how does that going to help us? Well, at least it's smaller quantities. We still have the issue, however, of implementing this in a network. I mean, typing in all the ones and zeros doesn't make sense. Well, with IP version 4, what we did is we represented eight bits at a time into decimal, and that was great. Because we have so many numbers to deal with, instead of converting the binary into decimal, we're going to convert the binary into hexadecimal. Oh, it's so easy. It's easier than doing decimal conversion into binary. Let me walk you through this. Let's take a number. Let's take the first 32 bits of this IPv6 address we have up here, and let's just take four bits at a time because that's really all we have to deal with. Four bits. Anybody can deal with four bits. Now, if we look at the powers of two, we have, we have four bits. We have an eight-bit position, the four-bit position, the two-bit position, and the one-bit position. And those values that we have are in gray above the actual IPv6 address. And so let's just take four at a time. Now, sometimes people will call four bits. They'll call them a nibble. That's not a joke. That's a literal term. It used to be like N-Y-B-B-L-E. I think you could spell it N-I-B-B-L-E. But if a byte is eight bits, a nibble is half that. It's four bits. So let's take the first four bits and convert that. Now, if we have 0, 0, 1, 0, there's a 1 on in the 2 position. I put the, the values in gray above it, and that would be a value of 2. Now, the good news is that nine, one, 0 through 9 is the same for decimal and hexadecimal. So we have 2 plus 0 is 2, so we have 2. If we move on to the next four bits, we have four zeros. Well, four zeros, no eights, no fours, no twos, no ones, that's also a zero. Let's go to the next grouping of four zeros. We have no eights, no fours, no twos, no ones, that's also a zero. Okay, great. So our conversion of the first 12 bits are two, zero, zero. Are you with me? Okay, so check this out. The last grouping before the colon is 0, 0, 0, 1. We have a 1 on in the 1 position, and that equals a hexadecimal or decimal value of 1. That's it. Now, the colon is just a visual representation that, hey, that's the end of that 16-bit grouping. Let's go to the next grouping. So if we go to the right of the first colon there, we have four more zeros. That's a zero. No eights, no fours, no twos, no ones. And then, my friends, it gets a little bit interesting. Let's just convert 1101 and find out what that is in decimal. Well, there's an 8, and there's a 4, so that's 12. And there's one more, because the one on the 1 position, that's 13. So in, de in, in decimal, that would be 13. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our handy-dandy conversion chart to see what that would be in hex. See, up in the top left-hand corner, let's take a look at this together. Decimal and hexadecimal are the same, 0 through 9. It's when we start carrying the 1 in decimal that hex doesn't carry the 1 yet. That's because decimal is base 10 and hexadecimal is base 16. So if we take a look at the number 9 in decimal or in hex, it's a 9. But once we reach 10 in decimal, in hexadecimal, a 10 is an A. 11 is a B, a 12 is a C, a 13 is a D, a 14 is an E, and a 15 is an F. And you want to remember those. In fact, you don't really have to remember. You can just write them down. Like, okay, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's going to go 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, and stop. And they're done. A, a child who's watched Sesame Street could actually pull this off by just matching it up, saying, okay, 10 is A, and then all the way through F. And that's it. I also put the binary in there for your reference. So if we wanted to convert the next four over of uh, the D value that we have there of 1101, we know that is a 13 in decimal. That would be a D in hexadecimal. The next value is 1011. So that's an 8 plus 2 plus 1. That'd be 11. 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 1 more is 11. And if we look at our chart, 11 is a B. 
So converting four bits at a time into hexadecimal is super. Just convert it into decimal. If it's higher than nine, convert that number to its hexadecimal equivalent, and you're good to go. And then the last conversion up here is 1000, which is an eight, no fours, no twos, no ones, which is a value of eight. And that's the first 32 bits of our 128-bit IPv6 address. And that is an important skill to have to be comfortable, first of all, that an IPv6 address is 128 bits long. It's got two parts to it. There is a network address portion on the left, usually at a 64-bit margin. And then we have a host ID, which is also normally at a 64-bit position on the right side. And the mask will tell you exactly where that dividing line is. The default mask that we're going to see most of the time in IPv6 is a slash 64. This 128-bit address is chopped up into eight groups of 16 bits each. Within those groups of 16 bits, we can convert them four bits at a time into hexadecimal by taking a look at those four bits and finding out what the value is in the eights and the fours and the two and the one position. So how exactly do we apply an IPv6 address? It couldn't be easier. Once we've identified what we want to use as the 128-bit IP address, we just go ahead and plug it in. So if we want to put an interface, let's say FA0 slash 1, onto this network with these common bits, and then give it a, a unique host ID, we could do so really simply by going into configuration mode. And once in configuration mode, we'll go to interface FA0 slash 1 right here. And we'll just say, I want you to use IPv6 address, and then you give it the address. Now, in this case, the first 64 bits have to match this. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 2001, the 0db8. And what I'm going to do in this one example only is I'm going to put the leading zeros there as well because there's four characters, four more characters, four more characters. The leading zeros, you don't have to type in, but I'm going to do it just for demonstration. So once I've done this, um, that's it. Now, the leading zeros, as I mentioned, we don't have to put back in because the router, if you have a leading zero, like zero, zero here or zero there or the zero, 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 it's going to simply say oh, leading zeros don't mean anything inside that grouping. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it off. It's like on a calculator. If you add zero, zero, one plus zero, zero, two, what do you get? Zero, zero, three. It's really just three. The leading zeros have no value. So we do a show IPv6 interface brief. It's showing us this 128-bit IPv6 address. It's what we typed in, 2001, zero DB8. It left off the leading zero in that group. Zero, zero, two, one. It left off the leading zeros there. With zero, one, one, one. Left off the, zeros, the zero there. And then the rest of this, so this part right here is our network address. If we take a look at our topology, 2001 db8 colon 21 colon 111 that is our 64-bit network address that's the street name that all these computers are going to have in common the last 64 bits here is the unique host id for this router's interface and how do we know it's 64 bits because the mask said that the first 64 bits right here are all network and that left the remainder of 64 bits to represent the actual host ID. Now there's a lot of fascinating stuff that's still going on behind the scenes when we just put that IPv6 address on, including this link local address. I've got that in another video as well. Before I send you off, I have a homework assignment that I'd like you to do. And here it is. Should you choose to accept it, I'd like you to take this host ID. Now, this is the back half, the last 64 bits of maybe host A or host B, and I'd like you to convert it from binary, one nibble at a time, convert it into a hexadecimal host ID. So pretend there's 64 bits in front of it. I just want you to do the last 64 bits. And when you're done, do me a favor and just make a quick post on the video with the answer. Once I've got a handful of those and I know that you've actually done some of the homework, I'm going to go ahead and place the next video in, which is going to take a look at the link local address and some of the magic that's happening behind the scenes when we put an IPv6 address on a computer or a router interface. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time.